the President of Council and your team for putting this 29th Engineering Assembly together. I was very shocked when I came in to find out that this assembly could be this big, this organized, and they were attended. I feel sorry. I feel sorry for myself that this is my first time I'm attending this program. And this is this is so sad what I have lost in the past. But I'm confident that I will catch up, Mr. President. Let me first thank our dear President, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a very good man. You may not know unless you get closer to him, for the executive orders he has assented to for the regulation and practice of engineering in Nigeria. And that executive order, I will draw a lot of my remarks from that because that's very inspirational and I think that there is a lot to draw from that. Mr. President, when I looked at majorly the mission statement, and I'll read just one of it, which is said to foster speedy acquisition of relevant engineering and technological skills through continuous professional development. Mr. President, this is very important. We need this assembly to change our country. We need this assembly to rewrite our history. One of the few things I've discovered among our colleagues is lack of patriotism. Not everybody. I've always told people that there are two things to chase. If you chase money and you chase the perfection, you will miss the perfection. But if you chase the perfection and its ethics, you will get the perfection and you also get the money. Today we lament that there are no jobs. and so forth. It means that if you have an excellent spirit in this assembly, we need to cultivate the attitude of discipline. Discipline is very important. I graduated in 1987 and did my youth service in the uh, uh, Italian company Saipem. And uh, during that time, we were going to work 29 days in a week. Six o'clock would rise. And my commitment was such that I was given a section, cathodic protection section. And that I was the only black man heading a section among the Italian company in the Lagos Edwin Gas Pipeline project. I had a very good training at Asutech then, and I had to deploy it. The question is, do we still have such discipline in our universities today? Do we still have such discipline? Do we still have such commitment? When I finished, I joined a company, Israeli company, a major in water project that's still here today, but with a different name, and that was SCC Nigeria Limited. And my salary then in 1988 to 89 was 650 naira. And when they paid me the first salary, I said, what do I do with all this money? It was simply too much for me. But I had to start saving. And from there, I went to head the Indian Group Flood Control Measures at 
Abia State. Of course, Aba in Abia State. I was there until I was called to face a challenge of the Aquaibom, the dome, the cultural center of Aquaibom. If you are from Aquaibom, I was the young engineer in 1990 and I built that Aquaibom cultural hall. It's still a very, very challenging project. What am I talking about? Discipline, patience, patriotism. This is very important. Mr. President, our profession is very key to the development of any nation. A very successful, worthy man in China was asked the secret of your success, and he said it's a feedback mechanism. Another man was asked, what is the secret behind the success of China? He said, if you want to succeed as a nation, you have to build roads. Mr. President, you have to take a stock of what we have and the product of our universities. The simple thing I ask young engineers when they appear before me for interviews, what is the mixed ratio of grade 40 concrete? of grade 20 concrete, of grade 25 concrete. I've only recorded 10% success for those that even have 10 years experience in the field. Mr. President, I'm here to present a solution and I take an evaluation of what the lawyers are doing. I'm not here to compare the two professions, but side by side, which of the professions is needed in nation building first? And it's the engineer. And the engineer is the only person that we go down with his works if something goes wrong. Mr. President, the young ones we are bringing up today are the people that will design our roads tomorrow. They are the people that will build our hospitals and so on and so forth. And so if the nation Nigeria wants our evening to be very peaceful and glorious, we have to take a quick evaluation of what we have to do to reinvent the practical impartation of knowledge, practical knowledge in our young engineers. And I look at what the lawyers are doing. They have one year law school. When I was doing my uh, industrial training, I confronted a man who was HOD in Delta State, and I said, Sir, I want to learn how to you know, treat an you know, infinite element in structural you know, analysis. He said he was not asked to teach me. And so I came out of the university without real practical experience. I learned on the job. How did we start a flyover revolution in Ebony State? We never built anyone. I never experienced in practical terms the building of flyover. But we had to give out one flyover to a Chinese company, the memories of Engineer Wesley Lipson. And so he was the one supervising it. And I put a number of engineers from various ministries together to understudy the Chinese company. And they did. And after the first flyover, which was contracted out, the race of the 14 flyovers have been built by Ebony State Engineers. <laughs> and there are twin flyovers, each and every one of them, twin flyovers, and a length of between 350 and 500 meter length. I sat down with the late engineer ways and I said that Bonny State has been neglected. Sometimes say there are 36 states and they name all the states and say there is one missing and they will call it Bonny. I said no, we have to rewrite the history. And we sat down to say what do we do? So we decided to design a very complex flyover that has about six outlets and a, and a, a fountain at the middle of the flyover. And we did that. 
And the aim of that flyover is when people get to that flyover, they must ask questions. In asking questions, you will put up on your state in recognition. <laughs> Mr. President, I'm telling you that it is possible for Nigerians to develop Nigeria. It is very possible. It's very possible. And Ebony State offers that challenge. I was told one time that the issue of concrete rule was debated at the Federal Executive Council. When I was a contractor as party chairman, I had constant failure of the asphalt in one of our roads. And I sat down and said, how do I solve this problem? And I went to cement technology, and I had to open the, the, the concrete and concreted it, and then put asphalt to valet, and the water seepage stopped. And when I started as a governor, I decided as a contractor, I have about three asphalt plants in Ebony State. I could as well be selling asphalt. But 99% of our projects are concrete road based, out of patriotism. <laughs> Mr. President, we have to retrain our engineers and we have to do something that looks like what the lawyers are doing. We have to have compulsory one year training program after graduation. We should do that. And that is the basis of acquiring you know, the, the, the qualification to answer engineer. There are some of us that are answer engineer that should not, by every standard. This is very important. And I offer you the first shot, sir. I offer to give you a structure that can host about 3,000 people at a go, totally and fully built in Ebony State. You can start with that. Our engineers will love it. We get our young people, you know, in this kind of arena. We provide people that are practical experiences. We provide expatriates. They come there to teach for six months and then six months must be compulsorily attached to projects. This is very important. I want us to radicalize engineering practice in Nigeria. I want us to take over our nation. When you go to sites, you see that they are black people that are doing the job with one man that is moving up and down. And we tend to obey that man. But it's a black skin. We tend to disobey the person. What is wrong with our skin? Mr. President, I can make people angry, but the truth remains that the cost of project in Nigeria is the highest all over the world. Why should it be? Why should we be? And this is the real reason why projects are being valued. I did something when I came on board. When I was deputy governor, I could sit there and I saw commissioners reviewing projects for more than even 50% of cost without recourse to the sitting governor. So I had to enact a law that any project signed cannot be reviewed by an inch without the consent of the sitting governor. And that has helped us as a state to put the cost of our projects in checks. And that has helped us to achieve a lot. Mr. President, I also had to train and engage our young engineers. 90% of our projects in my second tenure are done by Ebonyas, by engineers under direct labor cost. You know, sometimes people ask, what is the magic of a boy state? Some people say, Mr. President gives me additional fund because uh, it's my father. Uh, some say we print money and all kinds of stuff. But the truth remains that it's the engineering experience, it's patriotism and fear of God. A combination of all this has endured the glory that we see in our state. And so I would like us to engage, Mr. President. We have a lot to offer this nation. I'd like us to say no to the cost of projects in this country. I'd like us to say no to the treatment meted to our engineers in various construction companies that are expatriate based. I like the payments that are being done to expatriates, some of them not even engineers, heading us, should be reviewed in favor of our people too.
Mr. President, I want to offer myself for service to atone for my past sense of not attending this assembly. And I will be ready to take up any assignment towards radicalization of engineering practice in this country. The our airport is going to be one of the biggest and is going to be the first airport runway to be fully built with concrete. I asked somebody, why is it that we are not using concrete in building our terminal? They say the cost is high. I've been able to compare the cost of asphalt works and concrete works. And I discovered that concrete works is cheaper. But I decided that I have little money and I needed to keep quiet till I have fully built a point instead before I will reveal the secret. Because should I had, if I had reviewed the secret, those with big money would have taken the expert trade that we're teaching us. Now it's time to engage, it's time to review. Ladies and gentlemen, the use of concrete is cheaper than the use of Auschwitz. And if anybody wants to throw up a challenge, the person can come to Boeing State and I can give you the analysis of the use of Auschwitz from the first principle and give you the analysis of the use of concrete. As of today, we are constructing 199 kilometers of ring road, which we call Bakaliki Ring Road. The first section is awarded. And uh, it took me one year to battle with the finance you know, banks because they insisted that we must use asphalt. I said no, because of our substructure, you know, the type of substructure we have, which is predominantly clear soil. And that by the time we will be repaying this loan, it will be unto my grandchildren. And we say, your father ate the money. I said, no, I want to leave peace for my children and grandchildren. And I insisted and battled that we more use concrete to do that. And I provided from the first principle the comparative analysis of both, you know, uh, rigid and, uh, you know, flexible pavements. And at the end of the day, I had to sign on a taking that should the cost increase, I would pay. But surprisingly, the cost is going to be very much on the saving side. And uh, I will be inviting you in one of the uh, programs which will be hosted in Ebony State to come and commission that project because it will be completed before I leave office. <laughs> Finally, Your Excellencies and Mr. President, I want to welcome you for, uh, to a, a Boeing State for the AGM uh, this year. I'm told that it's going to happen in Southeast. I'm told some people are saying there's uh, uh, insecurity, insecurity in Southeast on the pages of newspapers. But the truth remains that we are safe and we are committed to hosting you. <laughs> and since I have the privilege of uh, chairing this Assembly, I will be requesting as a matter of privilege that I host that AGM in Ibony State. I want to thank you so much, and uh, I can assure you that even committee meetings, I won't miss it again. Uh, I will excuse myself uh, along the line because I thought it was yesterday. Uh, so I had to book a flight, you know, about now. But you know, I had to uh, make sure I attend and to plead for forgiveness for the years of uh, being absent, and uh, to also uh, offer to atone for those years. And so I want to thank you, all the participants, our young engineers, our seniors. Uh, thank you for the great work you're doing. Every way you got involved in the building of this nation. You've always been there and you've you know proved yourself, you know, uh, you know, very committed. And so Mr President, I will join you in the theme that I say radicalization of our engineering practice and to take our nation Nigeria building, you know, in our hands. Thank you and God bless you.